Hello and welcome back to the Ilham at Home conversation series. This week's artist also showed in our most recent exhibition with Singapore Art Museum. And, oh, here she is. Hello, how are you? This is Chuya Chia, greeting from Sweden. So how did you come up with the title of your work? So the, the title, Phrase and Memory, doesn't come out until the whole idea was falling. And until I have decided of the two words in the root, they're going to form because you have to make a decision. And when you, you grow the root with those texts, you have to already have some, something very clear on what you're going to write and which words you are using. Uh, in order, because the whole process was just making the two pieces of the, the root mat, I call it, <laughs> or pillow, it's, um, it took uh, at least two months. And the same thing to the paddock. I have to start coming up with this whole mapping, like a brand mapping. <laughs> wow. I guess. To list out all the keywords that relate to me inside or visually or bodily experience and start like asking questions and trying to have this kind of arrow mapping of where it's leading to and which one is appealing more and speaking more to me. Eventually, I, I found like traces um, is a, it's a word that had been quite commonly used for many people. For example, for if you're watching some documentary program when people are tracing after somebody or looking for some missing person, yeah. you are investigating something. You always go by trace. So that therefore, I think, Trace is a very important word of how you find back your history and the origin. And for example, now there's a pandemic um, that scientists are still trying to look trace back and trying to look for the core or the the origin of the virus. Uh, eventually, your your art, what you're showing and what you're speaking, you have a, a meaning of a process of going tracing back to who you are, where you come from. That is the reason why that uh, after I had talking and chatting with the curator at the time, what you started became like autobiography work because yeah. of all the tracing back in time. And it came from my childhood in Skincha. The visual landscape, the, the feeling of the air, fresh air, the, you know, you can even see the, the fire flies and where well, today you probably have to go to Slango or especially to view them, but they were just everywhere during the child. So I, I would say I'm very lucky to have this, such a beautiful childhood that gives me so much that became my inspiration in the later time, especially when I moved here. So yeah, then eventually I decided to use the word. I will like choosing like settlement or because when you're moving as an immigrant, from one place to another place, you need always to set things down. You need to have, you feel so disorientated and you need to find your location, find your orientation yeah. and, and confirm about your identity and, and everything. So when, when, so I was like, oh, maybe I use the word. Eh, no, it's a, it's too boring, the word. So, so I've been like juggling a little bit. And finally, when I decided to use phrases, Space and memory, so it's just like a light bulb, but that could be the title. Therefore, I mean the word space and memory because the, the two words is, had been the extract from the whole process of the whole making, and then it was the last juice. Therefore, uh, you can relate the piece not to the title, to the whole process, to the installation and to the representation of the, the whole uh, installation. Yeah. Because it was the whole process and it was an uh, extraction from, from the whole process of the work. Yeah. During your first performance, there was a recording of a little girl singing Bangau O oh Bangau. What does this song mean to you? And why I, I choose particularly this, because if you listen like Bangau or Bangau, 
The bluebird bangal, the workbird itself, is a bird living in a swamp area,、um, and rainforest delta or delta like near the river between river and sea, and that is exactly where I came from when I grew up in Xinjiang. And、uh, as a child,、uh, in the school we learned the song, and somehow this is a song that from time to time. Have been inside my head, no matter why I move on. And every time when I talk about land and human relation, or、uh, planting or agriculture, this song somehow step in. So it's part of the memory. The, the lyrics is really nice. That is for me from the banga, the water bird eating the fish. And then until the fish eaten by the snake, and then the snake eaten by the the frog, and then and then the frog, and then to the grass,、yeah. the grass not growing, and then the the why the grass not growing, then why the kerbau the cow not eating, and now is hungry, you know. So it's the it's the whole basic cycle of the whole nature cycle, and then in the end the human step in. So when I decided that I want to have the childhood song and I tried to sing my song myself, it was so ugly. <laughs> no, I couldn't stand my song, my my own voice. If I don't find the child's voice, I will skip that part. And I've been looking. I've even looking at my nieces. Like, can you help me? No, it's gonna be like safe for the public. No, no, no. You know. So and just one day before opening, Elham managed to help me and found.、Uh, To see the girls to sing for me, I was so happy and and felt so lucky because without the the voice, um, I it may not be matter to the audience because they may not understand with it or not because it's playing so subtly, but it does give me a lot during my performance. It gave me a different memory. Uh, it it gave me um a memory that when I. Take out or when I did the performance during the whole process, this music will recall again of the whole process. Replay your childhood once more. They give me more emotion, and in that piece, in carry out the whole process. So you are not just like okay, planning the plot, planning the action, planning this. No,、uh, that song, that song, give me more、um, to enhance. My feeling and my emotion and my memory. So it, I I still love it、uh, up to now and I guess now and then. Did you have a set vision for the outcome of your body print on the canvas? Also, how did you figure out the timing for both performances? I think intentionally creating a snow angel, but it does mem um assemble a resembling of some image of a. A soul angel because here I, I don't have all this experience in childhood, but here since I live here in Sweden, I do have experience that oh I could do something I could not done in during when I was a child.、Yeah. So now I can experience it just to have some kind of adding in a later part in the history that I could do that. So of course when I lay down, it felt like it, but I also try not to create a too strong. Um, connotation about snow angel because it's not about the snow angel, but it ha- it does、Look. have some kind of relay. Yeah, relay. Yeah. I I planning maybe three times, four times. Okay. And then I I will give me like um because I want to a print that is very strong. Yeah. And I know that if I do just one time, it may not even get the print. So I think that maybe three times. That's why in the process of the process. Performance, you would see that I actually had been trying to push my body very, very strongly, trying to get the imprint on the canvas. Yeah, that is like is the in the action itself is suggesting of something that you're trying to root yourself so strongly. You want to leave the print so strongly. You're trying to do a lot of things to keep your trace strong so that people trace trace back to you or see you. They know where you come from. Yeah, and. But another hand, I know that I have to do a few times. So, so I I created a repetitive、uh, memory for the audience. 
for that time, I think that okay, three is if I can get three times and it's strong enough, that will be enough. But I was planning maybe four or five, and I will also observe and look at the face of the audiences that they are kind of slowly get the mm, yeah yeah oh she going one more time oh yeah oh it's not just one time oh she you know and then suddenly you stop there. And then it's like you're lifting up people, uh, spirits or energy again. Like, oh, okay, it's done. What next? You know? Yeah. So there's a little, this little trick in sometimes when you come to more visual performance, um, you, you, you still care about how audience reaction. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the first performance and the second performance, they were one piece. But because I know that it's not possible to carry out the whole piece during the opening, therefore I I cut it because the second piece is a very long time, so it can be carried out during the opening. But then, like I said, it will be more like doing for me than the opening. So it's it's actually quite good to do it the next day with the sunlight and it is a closer uh, resemble of the real reality in terms of daylight yeah. or in the working in the paddy field <laughs> I would say so it was just perfect yeah so how did you create a sense of continuity between the two performances the piece is actually one piece in yeah. before so to create that kind of like continuation that uh, for me it's like a ritual when I make a doing a performance and um, so so it's really kind of horrific in to me. So whenever a plot or an area that I created for the performer, once I step out from the area, it's like a normal life. But once you back into the area, you back to that life again. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I did not take away the dress outside because the dress is actually had a lot of meaning uh, in terms of the feminine as a women role, as a, as a dress that's going to stay over as my body left behind. So therefore, I decided to have that piece uh, stay and I come in. So when I leave, left that space, that, space, that piece has to live within the area. Yeah, so I, I really like it a lot. Um, the next day when I came before the performance start and water becomes clear, it's so beautiful, like, and the print, on the dress, uh, at some point it looked like a python or snake, like leaving and sleeping, eating all the heavy stuff, like so much of the beautiful. I think you will see certain part in the video, and you you also realize that the prints on the luggage and the prints on the dress is actually the same, and I make those prints actually in the nineties, late nineties. Yeah, they were wood cut. I actually studied in Singapore at the time and it came across to me of a lot of questions about placement, orientation as identity and looking into the, because I came more like a Chinese uh, family background. So you're also looking at um, immigrant as a Chinese uh, overseas uh, diaspora and, and looking at your past. So I, I have been kind of interested in research about this motif that it was a cashmere pathway motif that have a lot of memory also in my childhood. That is the reason why I choose that. So the print again, that I've been using it in all, all of my painting in the late 90s. And yes, I use those prints in, for the bag and in the dress. Wow. On the dress. <laughs> so I make the dress, I, I print the dress, I, I bought the fabric and I print the fabric and make a dress out of that bag. Yeah. So you brought, you literally brought that luggage bag on the plane with you then? Yeah, actually the, that luggage was uh, carried uh, with me together with the two pillow grass yeah. mat with me as an extra luggage and uh, to Malaysia, the prints on the luggage was like a stick on and then I repaint, hand painting. Uh, didn't finish until that day before. 
So even I was staying in the hotel uh, at night, when I go back to the hotel, I continue painting the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> so everything was actually designed um, to this piece, every component. And why did you choose to incorporate these physical relics into your work? So for this piece, um, I understand that it's, um, it's going to be like exhibition format. And so when I invited to do the performance in the opening, I had to have every plan to be put in and have something left behind for it. The audience can come back. And I actually liked a lot of this performance installation because I, I know that performance art from the beginning was amateurial where people come see live and they keep that memory and uh, bodily experience carry with them and there's nothing left in that space and whoever passed by that space who had a strong connection to that space or the place they they might keep in in very privately or very individually to themselves yeah. uh, that you can revisit a place and recall something happening by them uh, but then by creating an installation that has left behind from um, performance work, is kind of at a certain time frame, the setting is remained so that it prolongs the experience for people who are revisiting or visiting the place who can still view the work by connecting the documentation. So there are two ways here that people who have been witnessing the life, they will be able to re uh, memorizing the experience and had a second look of the experience from life experience and the setting experience. Yeah. And the other the for people or audience who have not been um seen the life and they're still able to connect to the work to the lyrics and the, and the, all the object and the, the documentation which making the documentation much more important also to recall the process. Just a piece of the video itself, sometimes it's very difficult to, to keep the interest of looking at the documentation unless you are specifically like studying something that you are, you had a question to search that you are trying to figure out. But for people who have like a open mind, who come to the gallery or a space to see a work, is almost more intriguing by have something left for them to see the physical uh, left of object that left behind after the performance and how they had and it's more interesting to recall that how they were before and how they were, they are right now after and yeah. able to show. You use organic materials like wheatgrass to create the two pillows and mud for the canvas. Why did you opt to use such unconventional art mediums? Doing performance art. Um, in different festival formats, often uh, you order art material that is ready from everywhere or shop or something like that. And then I thinking of how do I, as a performance artist or contemporary artist, that I will able to uh, use a material that is more significant, that representing of yourself. Yeah. And of course, I also realizing that uh, most of the base material that I'm uh, using is so much like a uh, organic and it relates to food and concern to the land. As a child, like seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, I have to help running to the paddy field and uh, you can't do much in the planting but you can contribute and you understand the, the land, you understand that those paddy that you plant in, the rice you're eating throughout the year, is actually the hard work and, uh, and the nutrition and how you give to the land, you feed the land in order to, to be able to harvest um, food for the rest of the year and it all came from the land. Because throughout the process of doing performance art, I often try to see how one object or one art material that you order that from an uh, exhibition or, or from um, a shop that you're able to use them and are able to use them in a multi-different form or transform them from one means to another 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 until it totally finished its life as the object or the appearance itself so as i said that when i use the material i continue exploring until there's not i have nothing to say yeah. so at this moment i still have work to say about this material that i still have idea i still have inspiration i still have the meaning that i want to carry out 
So I will continue using uh, the same material, exploring and doing it in a different way. Well, thank you so much for discussing your piece with us. So we say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. So for those watching, if you have any questions, feel free to message us at Ilham Gallery KL on Instagram. Thank you for tuning in.